G'day everyone and welcome to a look at some of the model railway exhibits that were on show at the 2023 model train and hobby show held at the Sandown Racecourse in Melbourne over the March long weekend. Exhibition reports and other videos on this channel are made possible by the Patreons on Patreon. Starting with Australian N-scale layout Billabong Flat. Billabong Flat represents a branch line in an extremely remote country Victoria during the 1970s. The layout follows Victorian Railway's practice and depicts the end of a branch line with a small station yard and good shed. An additional feature is the modern rolling stock repair facility built as part of the decentralisation development program. Whilst the workshops are still in use, the decentralisation program was not successful, and so the township was never developed. They feature Australian trains. During the exhibition, you'll see a variety of trains running, although primarily Victorian, but at times New South Wales and South Australian equipment is used. The layout measures 1.6 metres by 0.6 metres, and is designed to fit in the back of a car, and shows how N-Scale can provide interesting operations in a very small space. The Victorian N-Scale Collective's T-Track Layout, which is a series of freelance N-Scale dioramas in T-Track modules. The scenery does not represent any particular location. The trains that are running are mostly models from Victoria and other Australian trains from different eras. Most of the modules form part of several people's home layouts. By following the T-Track guidelines for construction, these modules can be easily combined to make a much bigger layout. And for more information, you can visit their website, which is vnsc.org.au.
HO scale layout over the fence. Structures and buildings on this layout are located in Newcastle, New South Wales and its surrounds. The individual blocks have been detailed and then arranged to create a realistic diorama. One section of the layout has been loosely modelled on the Adamstown Station precinct. Rolling stock on the layout covers the 1980s to the 1990s period. The signal box is a little bit more time specific. After 1984, in which it was decommissioned, the supporting infrastructure was removed and pre-1989 when our town model railway club took it over for their club rooms. All buildings and structures have been scratch built using styrene product with some aluminium sheet for roofing. The memorial, cars, people and even the wheelie bins were sourced from retail outlets. This would have had to have been the nicest and probably best detailed layout at the exhibition. American HO scale layout, Whitefish from the Waverley Model Railway Club. Whitefish is a walk-in modular donut of 11 separate modules measuring 5.4 metres long and 4.5 metres wide. It features two individual tracks on separate levels which are connected by inclined helix ramps. The top level is a simple oval while the bottom track features a reversing loop at each end. 
Connecting tracks on the helix incline join the two reversing loops on the lower level to the upper oval track. The track plan has 24 driven turnouts powered by Tortoise servo motors. There are no traditional remote switch control panels on this layout. All trains and turnouts are controlled by using the club standard Digitrax handheld throttles. The layout models an area around the town of Whitefish, Montana. The route was used by the Great Northern Railway, in particular the Empire Builder which ran between Chicago and Seattle. American N-Scale Layout Deep Rock Junction, depicting a dual-track mainline running through an American town.
Australian HO scale layout Tybrook. This layout is a step back to the past, showing what life was like for the Victorian railways between the 1940s and the 1970s. I just bought train 22. Good in. It does take a while. I mean, once you're like, oh, it's too big. Set running again soon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Brick-built trains by the Melbourne L-Gage Train Club. The Melbourne L-Gage Train Club is a team of dedicated LEGO fans who are committed to designing, building and presenting some of the largest and most amazing brick-built train layouts possible. Each of their members spends countless hours creating buildings, bridges and Australian landmarks, vehicles as well as engines and, of course, the rolling stock. This layout is always a crowd favourite and one that is seldom the same twice as they are always adding, changing and, well, rebuilding different parts of the layout. Yeah.
Yeah, it's great. So he someone sent me a picture of it the other day. It's like, someone should make a model of this. I'm like, I agree. It'd be pretty good if someone did. And I was like, yeah, just saw it there. I'm like, oh, no way. Paradise Valley, an O and 30 scale layout from the Puffing Billy Modelers Group. This is based on the Upper Fern Tree Gully to Jembrook Narrow Gauge Line in the 1950s. And the name Paradise Valley is the original name of Clementus Station. Oh, right. N-scale layout railways of Japan. This is from the Australian Japanese Model Rail Group, who seek to capture and display the essence with their N-scale modular railway layout. They do participate in various model railway exhibitions and Japanese festivals throughout Victoria. These layouts contain faithfully reproduced and highly detailed Japanese dioramas. Between all their members, they have an enormous inventory of trains, from the famous high-speed bullet train to the Intercity Express, Interurbans, Good Steam, Diesel, Electrics, Private Railways, and even trams. Fictional Australian narrow gauge layout Gum Leaf Gully Railway. A tail chaser layout set at the turn of the 19th century, though not based on anywhere in particular. Alternative Tracks is a North American outline N-scale layout measuring at 3200mm by 1200mm. The scenic modules are only 225mm wide. The modules join each other at a 160 degree angle allowing for the tracks to flow through a gentle curve throughout the scenic section. Now there were other layouts on display, unfortunately I just did not get enough footage to make enough video content with them. But there were probably about three or four more layouts, varying from Z scale all the way up to, I think it's American Flyer O.
Now, the highlight of this exhibition is probably access to trade stands. You get all the big players there, like Ascision, SDS and Phoenix Models, On Track Models, Modelers Warehouse, Train Girl, Train World, Orient Express Models from Adelaide, and a few others. So, on a personal note, I do want to express my feelings about this exhibition, however, I am going to hold back as I don't want to say anything negative. However, what I will say is that this was once a standout model railway event in Melbourne, and it is a great event if you're looking for retailers. This is also a hobby show, so there are dolls houses, racing cars, ham radios and crafts also on display, but unfortunately I just didn't really get any shots of them either as I ran out of time. Now, entry for this is priced at $20 for adults and $5 for children under 16. Now, if you are planning on attending this next year, it has been moved off the long weekend to a two-day show. And look, I'll probably be back next year, as there won't be any clashes with other events happening in Melbourne over the long weekend. Now, if you did attend this expedition, I'm sure the organisers are looking for feedback on this event, and I strongly suggest that you leave them in the comments section below. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Uru!